Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous video, we started talking about Clostridium perfringens. Today, we'll talk about some diseases caused by Clostridium perfringens, including fasciitis, cellulitis, myositis, myonecrosis, gas gangrene, collectively known as soft tissue infections, caused by the anaerobic Clostridium perfringens. In the next video, we'll talk about the gastrointestinal diseases caused by Clostridium perfringens. With that said, now let's get started. First of all, perfringens. What the flip does that mean? Technically, it means perforate, to break through. To break through and perforate and invade your tissue, causing invasive tissue necrosis that can be life-threatening. What do you mean by invasive tissue necrosis? I mean, we start cellulitis, fasciitis, myositis, dig deeper, myonecrosis, and gas green, bacteremia, septicemia, bleeding hemolysis, you name it. A medicosis way of thinking about it is perfringence equal to perfume. I am not a language expert, but it's probably true that we called it perfume because it perforates through the air. It might not be very technical, but it's gonna help you remember. The patient in the hospital who's wound, whose gangrene smells nauseatingly sweet like rotting apples. The patient is about to die in the freaking burn unit, but at least he smells really good. For maximum understanding and retention, please watch these videos in order. Clostridium perfringens is a gram-positive rectangular rod, spore-forming, yes, but rarely, anaerobic, non-motile. The classic story of the soldier who fell with an open wound on the ground. The wound got contaminated with the soil. Clostridium perfringens made their way into his wound, causing all kinds of soft tissue necrosis. How can we treat a condition caused by an anaerobic organism? Give me the opposite. Give me aerobic conditions, such as a hyperbaric oxygen chamber to kick those bacteria in the nuts. Do Clostridia perfringens bacteria make spores? Yes, they do, but rarely. What's a spore? Structurally, calcium dipiclonic acid, which is surrounding and protecting the bacteria from the surrounding environment. What's a clostridium? It's a gram-positive bacteria, strictly anaerobic, and make spores, but cannot reduce sulfate to sulfite. Clostridium perfringens can make spores, they are anaerobic, and they can make toxins. They are everywhere around you, including in the soil. Remember the soldier who got wounded and fell to the ground and then his wound got infected from the soil via Clostridium perfringens. The alpha toxin, i.e. the alpha lecithinase, i.e. the phospholipase C, is gonna eat his tissue alive. You know why? Because the alpha toxin, as we have discussed in the previous video, is a lecithinase or a phospholipase which will break down your phospholipids in your lipid bilayer cell membrane. It will break down the cell membrane of your red blood cells, hemolysis and bleeding. It will break down the cell membrane of your white blood cells, of your platelets, of your endothelium and of your tissue, causing tissue destruction, liver toxicity, myocardial dysfunction, etc. What are the diseases caused by Clostridium perfringens, soft tissue infections, food poisoning, septicemia? Tell us more about soft tissue infections. Generally, Clostridium perfringens colonizes the skin, but causes no symptoms whatsoever. Sometimes, however, they can cause cellulitis, fasciitis, myositis, myonecrosis, gas and green, with lots of gas inside your soft tissue. Where did this gas come from? The rapidly dividing bacteria in your tissue are ramping up their metabolism in your tissue producing gas. The classic story is here, trauma to soft tissue. The bacteria, Clostridium perfringens, enters your body. Seven days later, you'll start feeling severe pain, followed by myonecrosis, shock, and acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. Two days later, you might die. Hemolysis, bleeding, bacteremia, septicemia are not uncommon. Let's have some medical fun with medicosis. When you have gas in your soft tissue, this is gas gangrene caused by Clostridium perfringens infection, among others. When there is gas in the wall of the intestine, a condition known as pneumatosis intestinalis, not to be confused with medicosis perfectionalis, this is caused by necrotizing enterocolitis or NEC which is a horrible condition in pediatrics, especially when the newborn is born prematurely. 
guess under the skin felt on physical exam is the classic sign of crepitus or subcutaneous emphysema. Could be caused by a traumatic rupture of the esophagus, traumatic rupture of tracheobronchial tree, tension pneumothorax. These are emergency conditions. It could also be caused by less severe conditions. Gas bubbles in your blood is air embolism. Could be caused by chest trauma intubation and mechanical ventilation. Now you're not just ventilating the lungs of the patient, you're also ventilating the traumatized tissue. Oops, gas is gonna escape. Air embolism could also be caused by a central venous line that has been disconnected. Oops, gas is gonna escape. It could also happen during the notorious Ferco's node biopsy procedure where gas is gonna escape near the big vessels. What if we have nitrogen gas bubbles in soft tissue, especially in a diver who ascended rapidly. This is the bends, decompression sickness previously known as case and disease. Let's review Clostridium perfringens from Picmonic. Clostridium perfringens, classroom with perfume. Gram positive, here's the angel. Bacillus, here is my rod. Anaerobe and anaerobe, spore forming, here are the spores. Alpha toxin lecithinase, here's the alpha toxin. Lecithinase is a phospholipase to break down the phospholipid bilayer cell membrane. Diseases include myonecrosis with gas gangrene, food poisoning with watery diarrhea after eating undercooked meat with some sweet potato, which inhibit the inactivation of the toxin. This food poisoning usually has watery diarrhea, unless it is necrotizing enterocolitis, in which case you develop bloody diarrhea. How can we manage uh, myonecrosis with gas gangrene? Hyperbaric oxygen chamber. The best response to an anaerobic organism is with aerobic conditions. Oxygen. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course, which you can download today at medicosisperfectionetis.com. I also have a series on surgery high yields lectures, as well as emergency medicine high yields with toxicology, with some arrhythmias, with ARDS, drowning, etc. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.